Hello guys, I'm Alexander and welcome back to my channel. This here is my microwave. This microwave would have been with me for the past year and a half. But it stopped work somewhere about in here. And I've thrown that microwave down for a good while. Then I intend to throw it out. But for some reason, I think that I wanted to repair it and see. Now for any reason at all that the Megatron gone bad, I will not repair it, I will throw it out. Microwave is such a low price nowadays, it doesn't make sense to replace a Megatron. The Megatron is more expensive right now. Microwave is too cheap to replace a Megatron. So I will not replace a Megatron in this video. I will only attempt to replace the capacitor or the capacitor I voltage fuse. Anything other than those things, I will not repair it. I will throw it away and buy a new one. So now we're going to pull the cover from the microwave. But before we pull the cover from the microwave, a little disclaimer. Remember, now to remove the cover from the microwave, you need to plug the microwave from the power outlet. This microwave is held by seven screws, three of which are protective screws. As you can see, I have removed the inside of the screw so I can use an Allen key. And the remaining four are Phillips head, or what you would call a star point. Now that all the screw I've removed from the cover, it is now simple to pull back and gently remove the cover. Now you can see the inner internal of the microwave and it's just a simple build. Here you have a transformer that puts you out know, is around 2000 AC current. Here you can see the capacitor and the Megatron, the fan and the control board the light and a hidden light switch. We have mentioned earlier on that this is the Megatron and if the Megatron gone bad, it doesn't make sense I repair the microwave. It doesn't make sense to throw it away because the microwave is cheap. Neither the transformer. For this video, I will not replace any of these two items. I only focusing on the capacitor or the capacitor fuse. Now remember, as I mentioned earlier on, if you're not comfortable around current, please get a certified electrician. Do not go stick a finger inside the capacitor. The capacitor always charge and it's pushing out around 4000 watt to 2000 watt, 2000 volts. So before we do anything in here, we want to discharge the capacitor. And to discharge the capacitor, all you need a little pliers, preferably bird beak pliers and the reason for the bird beak pliers it is more safer because it's insulated and it's already of that crossing. I will be now trying to discharge the capacitor. Now usually you would hear a pop sound or a flash but because the microwave already come protected for all those so the reason why I didn't hear the pop is because the diode already grown to the chassis of the microwave. So it, once the microwave plugged out or turned off, it already discharged itself. We can go ahead and make our test. Now, before you move any of these wires from the capacitor, you want to write it down or make a mental note of where these wire was. It's very important to know that. For the testing, you will need a multimeter. And I have my little trusty multimeter here. A little shabby but it still work. So to test that there is no fault in the microwave, hardware pre-test, you want to put your multimeter and continuity. And continuity something so like this. So that's continuity. We already know that the microwave is working from earlier on 
you have symmetry at the hot water and it still get cold but we are going to test everything here is a fuse that bring in AC current so you want to test this fuse and see if it's all right so you hear that sweet sound that mean that fuse is okay now we remove the wire from the capacitor remember to make marks or take a picture so you can remember where the wire was here is a high voltage diode for the capacitor and that means it's automatically discharged now the diode is always safe because the diode is only one direction now to test the capacitor use a multimeter and test between these two points or these two poles so there is no beep that means it's safe that means the poles are not short so we switch it around and do it vice versa still safe poles are all right they are not shorted out check between the capacitor and the capacitor body so we check here there is no reading so the capacitor is safe no reading so the capacitor is safe also so far so good all the components are checked out the next one is the Megatron simply remove the pole from the Megatron and we can now test between these two poles and we have continuity that means the Megatron is all right that's the body of the Megatron to safely get a reading or a beep beep in our reading sound that means they're short there's no reading there's no beeping so that means it is okay so now we're going to check the transformer if there is any shots now we should check the input of the transformer and we get a beep so that means it is good now we're going to check if there's any shots in the transformer itself to the wires on the transformer side there is some little scrape of you may can see it on camera but they are here so we're going to find the right pole right so that's the right pole so we check the first one and there's no reading in the meter that means it's good second one there's no reading so that means it's good so far so so far everything is good we should check the continuity between the megatron connection and the transformer which is these two connection for these two connection is okay to hear a reading that means it's okay for the next test is from the transformer to the megatron connection you should be hearing any beeping or any reading if you hear a beeping or a reading that means bad kyle so far there's no reading or no beeping so it's all right so that was the conclusion of the transformer test as you can see this transformer is quite working fine nothing out of place so what could be the problem so we have to continue some more tests but we have complete all the tests here so we can now move the diode because if we can't find a problem here we have to test the diode and the diode is a different set of testing now we're going to check the diode so we're going to use a 12 volt adapter so it's 120 from the wall but you're pushing out 12 volts and to prove that this is 12 volts i'm going to plug it in put the multimeter and dc Well, it's saying 14 volt, 13 volt. Well, it's 12 volt anyway. So 
So this is what we're going to use to check the diode. Checking out the diode mean I'm going to get a piece of wire. Put this is the positive side of the DC current. this side in the diode and then I'm going to use the multimeter positive side of the multimeter put right here negative side of the multimeter we'll put right here and we get 29 volt see that 30 to 29 volt so the diode is good so once again this check everything is complete right here so now I'm looking at the next problem that I'm probably faced in that we may have an open circuit somewhere on the main board. So now that it appeared that everything all the test Megatron transformer diode testing have been complete. Now I have one more testing and to do that testing I need to put back everything together because that testing is going to lead me to this relay right here. And this relay is what power the transformer. So if there is no current going to the transformer, that means it cannot power up the microwave to be hot. So I need to test this relay. And to test that relay, I'm going to have to connect back everything. Now we have everything connected back as it was, I hope. We have to now plug in the microwave to make that dreadful test. All right, so we're going to plug back in the microwave into the AC currents by the plug because we want to test the relay. So if you can see the light and the microwave is on, so that means I've connected back everything perfectly. Now to test that relay. So to test the relay, all we need to do is put back our multimeter in continuous mode or reading anyone you prefer and remove this plug and also we need to power up the microwave and then test between these two and test between these two core we should get a reading because by now we should have gotten a reading you should have get a peeping sound from the multimeter because then the circuit have, would have been closed. So that test tells us that there is something or there is a problem with the control board. So we are going to bypass the relay and stick a piece of wire in here. Remember this is live. So you do not want to be electrocuted. So you do not want to be electrocuted. So be careful if you're doing this test. I mean, there's other ways to do this test, but I choose to do it this way. We're going to start the microwave. So basically what we have done, we have powered the Megatron. So we'll see if the water will hot this time. Houston, we have a winner. Ooh. The water is very hot. 
I don't have a thermometer to show you that the water is hot, but it is hot, guys. Trust me, it is really hot. And there you have it, guys. So, we have done a bunch of tests and couldn't find the problem that usually occurred in normal microwave. So it wasn't the Megatron, it wasn't the Transformer, and it wasn't none of these diode. It was the culprit right here, the relay switch. So now we have to remove that relay switch and replace it before we can use it. Thanks for watching guys. Remember to like, subscribe.